<laughs> yeah, shooting guns is fun. You know, it's also really dangerous, not just because of all that lead. That was double off buck, which means that's a lot of lead pellets. Each of the primers in these cartridges contain a material called lead stiphnate, which is a component containing lead. That's in the air. And I bet that shotgun blast sent up quite a bit of smoke. Now, here's the thinking. We're gonna do a quick video here for you guys on lead safe practices. Boring? Well, how boring is losing your ability to make kids? Losing your memory or maybe having other issues like your children not properly developing into full adults. Think I'm exaggerating? Not one bit. Lead is a very prevalent element in our world. It's definitely all over Earth's crust. It just doesn't do well inside of our body, in our systems. And being on the range, indoor ranges especially, but exposed to lead stiphnate from the primers and lead as it hits steel targets, hits berms, through the loading process, the cleaning up of your brass. So when you pick up brass, there is lead stiphnate left on these pieces of brass. People put it in their pockets, it gets into your clothing, when this is on your hands, you eat, you breathe, you uh, grab a pop can, you smoke a cigarette, and you are putting it into your body over and over again. So let's talk about some very basic practices. We're on an indoor range. This floor gets swept, it gets hepa vac it gets mopped, but there's lead all over this floor. When I leave this range and Drew leaves this range, our shoes carry with them tons of lead material, as well as other unburnt powders and things like that. That gets in the mats of my truck. I then walk into my house with it. I take it to the grocery store everywhere I go. Now, I may take my clothes off right when I get home, but if I wore these shoes into my truck, when I get into my truck with other shoes on, that lead is transferring to the shoes from my floor mats. You may call me crazy, but I am very particular about this stuff. As such, I have more than one pair of shoes. These shoes, I take them off when I walk out of the range and I put on other shoes. My clothing, it gets washed separately than other clothing in the house. My hands, my face, my arms, at this range, we have a sink where I use a lead wash soap. Now that's not soap like cleaning germs. It's actually breaking the bond of the lead off of your skin so that you can rinse it away. D-lead soap and good old fashioned soap to wash the D-lead off. So D-lead basically is a heavy, he removes heavy, it. yes it is, removes heavy metal. Quickly lifts, suspends and removes lead, chromium, mercury, arsenic, cadmium, wet skin, apply D-lead, hand soap, lather, wash and rinse. So we're gonna run nice cold water. D-lead, this D-lead breaks the bond of those heavy metals off the skin works not just for lead, but cadmium and nickel and zinc and other heavy metals as well. It's breaking that, loosening it up and helping suspend it so that I can wash it off of me. Once I finish with that, I use good old fashioned regular soap to wash this stuff off of me because there's a lot of names in the description of ingredients that I can't pronounce and I don't want that crap on me either. Wash your hands with water after you use them. That stuff is not some stuff that you want to be wiping your behind your face with. There's chemicals on these products that are, are intended to remove one thing, but they're not entirely completely safe uh, themselves. Do a good beard washing while you're at it. Scrub yourself clean. Clean your phone if you're playing with that on the range. Think about this stuff as if it's toxic, because it is. Don't take it home to your family. Don't be eating, smoking, and drinking liquids on the range. Keep it out of your bloodstream. Keep your levels low. D-lead wipes. 
are not for cleaning you. They don't, it's not like uh, you're washing your hands before a meal. D-lead wipes are good. I travel with them to classes when I'm out of doors or away from a sink, but that's not cleaning germs off of you. That's helping break that bond of lead. So if you use D-lead wipes, wash your hands with regular soap and water when you're done. I see guys on the range after uh, shooting, we go to take a break and they use hand sanitizer or baby wipes. There's a reason that these heavy metal wipes are made and soaps. That's what's breaking that bond with that heavy metal in your skin and then you can flush it away with water. Read the instructions of whatever you're using. Hand sanitizer is for killing germs. Lead and other heavy metals are not germs. So please do not think by pumping some alcohol gel onto your hands and rubbing it that you have in any way, shape, or form done anything to heavy metals. In fact, you may very well cause some expansion of your pores and you are causing yourself to absorb that lead versus somehow getting rid of it. Smearing it in circles with gel does nothing of the sort. Even baby wipes, what you want is fresh cold water. You wanna run that stuff away from yourself and read the instructions on any of the heavy metal removing soaps or wipes that you see. So OSHA's got some great information. The CDC has some great information. Here's the thing you wanna think about. Treat lead as if it's something you don't want in your body. Then have a system, a plan. If you watch our stuff, if you train with us, you understand that I'm into systems because systems are things we can follow to get a result. The result is keeping that heavy metal out of our bloodstream, keeping it away from our kids, keeping it out of our homes. It's not a joking matter. I have a friend who's genius level IQ. He was a Green Beret in the Ranger Regiment, in the Army, and ended up having a very high level corporate job after his time in the military. He said due to lead exposures from an indoor range, he couldn't count to 100 in 20s. Somebody gave him a stack of cash in 20s. He couldn't physically count the 20s to get to 100. That's scary. That was because of elevated lead levels. Now it doesn't act the same to everybody, but it does cause various issues like we talked about. So good practices. Make sure the clothes and shoes don't go home with you. Keep them out of your car. Have an extra set of shoes so that when you leave the range, you put those on and the other shoes either stay on the range or even go in a plastic bag in your trunk. Sounds, it sounds severe and it should be. Wash your hands, your arms, your face when you are cleaning your guns. I see people on the internet cleaning their guns at the kitchen table. You eat there. That is the easiest way to ingest lead is through your mouth clean up on your guns. I see videos, and I talked about this when we were on the range, of dudes cleaning their guns at the kitchen table with their kids like it's some Norman Rockwell scene. In reality, it's not a Norman Rockwell scene. It's a you poisoning your family with lead at your kitchen table. Buy a box of nitro gloves, super cheap. Use them when you're cleaning. I want you to think about when you rub or run a wire brush down a bore, if that bore is dry, all you're doing is atomizing lead into the air. So you may wanna make sure that you're using a solvent to help keep the lead in a suspended liquid and you can clean it off then with rags and such rather than if we were to sit here and get a close up and we start running a brush through here, you'd probably see a puff of lead dust coming out of there. You ingest that, it goes right into your lungs, right into your mouth, and it's very easy to get into your system. Don't drink when you're on the range. I'm not talking about alcohol, not even water. And people sometimes will see on the range no beverages allowed. They think that they don't want spills. No, it's a lead safe practice so that you don't put the bottle or cup to your mouth and wash lead into your mouth that's around your face. Don't bite your fingernails. Don't put your fingers in your mouth. Simple things like that. Don't smoke. You get what I'm saying? So. If you start to think about how this dust gets into your body and then you make a conscious effort to keep it out of you, you will not only keep your lead levels lower, you will also uh, not allow it to elevate. If you train on an indoor range that has a substandard ventilation system, I wouldn't do it. This is an action target range with one of the best ventilation systems money can buy. It's what you're hearing in the background. And you see in our videos, like when we just shot this shotgun, you watch the smoke travel down range. If you're on an indoor range, keep the ventilation running as you do cleanup. Something as simple as how you broom the floor 
people will come here that, that are not members or don't understand this thought process and they start sweeping willy-nilly. By that I mean we push all of the debris on the floor towards the traps so that the dust becomes airborne and gets sucked into the ventilation system to run through the HEPA filters. That's keeping it out of our lungs. If I push it uprange, it's going to push the dust into the air, which then washes back onto my face and body. Guys, this stuff is serious. I think this explosion of, of love for firearms in the Second Amendment is awesome. A lot of young dudes, people out there that are exploring the constitutional freedoms that we have and using them not only for fun, but for self-protection. Don't cause injury to yourself, to your family with lead contamination in an effort to protect and promote good long life. You're training to protect yourself, don't hurt yourself in the process. Mickey with KerryTrainer.com, Drew behind the Steadicam. If you guys need more information, go to the CDC, go to OSHA. If you train a lot, visit your doctor, say, hey, I would like a blood test for lead levels. I shoot a lot of guns. And if your levels are elevated at all, you may want to have your kids checked because you may be bringing this stuff home. Very important. I want to make sure that we really lock in the point, guys, why this lead is bad for our system. Not just for ours, but again, our children, grandkids, children that we come in contact with, if you're a school teacher, baseball coach, whatever. The symptoms are one thing, except in youngsters, you can have irreversible, completely permanent brain developmental issues. This is heavy duty stuff, all because we did not have good habits, good practices, good procedures on the rain. Use the good practices, make sure, make sure that if you are exposed to it on a regular basis, you get tested, even annually. It's a very inexpensive test. You may have to ask your doctor for the test and give them a reason because oftentimes, without a good reason, a doctor won't write the prescription for that, that blood test. There are places where you can also get a hair sample done if you wanna get another type of testing done. Do yourself a favor, do your family a favor. In the quest to learning how to protect ourselves with weapons, let's not injure our family with heavy metals. This is Mickey and Drew with CarryTrainer.com. Be well, don't be a dickhead. If you are in an area like this range where you have to do heavy cleanup, uh, the ventilation system, the traps, even sweeping up, having a respirator is not a bad idea. We do maintenance on this range where these walls come down. I'll show up, ask, ask the guys with a full body Tyvek suit on and a full face respirator. And they laugh at me. The dust cloud from the lead can be significant.